and now let's do a bookshelf reorganization video, I guess. Let me know in the comments if you want that. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another book haul. Yes, another one. I literally just did like one of the biggest book hauls in my life ever in April and it's July and I'm already back with 25 books that I need to haul for you guys. Before we're gonna get into all the books, I wanna say that yes, I look a bit sweaty because it's really quite hot. I'm also not wearing any makeup, but I was thinking why the hell would I put on makeup when this is literally how I look about 90% of the times during quarantine. So I was thinking it's really ridiculous if I apply makeup just to film a video, but I look just fine without it. <laughs> Let's just get into the book haul because I have so many amazing books to talk about. Lots of new releases, lots of not so new releases, so many books that I bought in order to educate myself. Also still some birthday presents that I didn't show you guys in my previous book haul, which was actually closer to my birthday. <laughs> so the first book that I will mention to you guys has a really fun announcement attached to it. So Leonie from The Book Leo and I, we have started our bi-monthly book club called The World Readers book club. So we are two Dutch girls who want to explore the world and we do that through reading but most of the stories as probably a lot of you guys as well have noticed take place in either the US or the UK and those are not the only two countries in this world. So we have made a Twitter please go follow us on there because then you can vote on like what our next reads will be and we will be giving you guys a little bit like updates about when our live shows will be. We announced our book club on Twitter and we let you guys vote between three books and the book that we will be reading in July and August is The Poppy War by R.F. Quang. So of course in order to be able to read this I had to buy it and I didn't know of this book up until two months ago and ever since that moment I've seen so many people read this book and this is a fantasy debut from this author and it is about Chinese history and the opium wars. I do not know anything else besides that but this will be one of my very next reads and I'm very curious. It's quite a big book which is why I kind of thought it would be ironic to use my bookmark which says I like big books and I cannot lie and then in the little corner it says just kidding big books scare the shit out of me this is one of my new bookmarks that I created for my Etsy a link to my Etsy shop will be in the description box down below but if you have followed me for a little while you know I am so bad at like starting and finishing chunky books and this book is a chunky one I can tell you <laughs> and if you want to join us please do so follow us on on Twitter and I am so excited to be hosting this book club with Leonie. She is a wonderful booktuber. So we're off to a great start but the next book is amazing and I just finished reading it like an hour ago and that is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I have read The Poet X by her as well and oh my god this book is another masterpiece. <laughs> I bought this because the hardcover was on Amazon for five euros which I don't know how that's possible. And this is a book that follows two sisters who don't know they are sisters at the beginning of this story, but one of them is from the Republica Dominicana, so the Dominican Republic, and the other girl lives in New York City. They both get the news that their dad has died in a plane crash, which, by the way, happened in real life as well. This book is based on true events. After their father's death, they kind of get to know about each other's existence, and this book kind of explores their relationship and the aftermath of of their dad's dad's death that's always really difficult to pronounce for a non-native english speaker dead versus dead versus death i just oh my brain cannot <laughs> this was written so beautifully i read this while listening to the audiobook and even though this is not my july wrap-up this book was amazing and if you have the chance to pick it up do so please the next book on my pile down here is a song below water by bethany c morrow so many people were talking about this book on twitter i think you could kind of describe this book as a contemporary disguised as a fantasy. It says, A Song Below Water is the story for today's readers, a captivating modern fantasy about black mermaids, friendship, and self-discovery set against the challenges of today's racism and sexism. Which sounds very interesting. Then I got sent Space Between Us by Jamal Aflatuni, and I rarely accept an author's like question of, hey, do you want to maybe like review my book? But this one sounded very 
interesting, intriguing, and something that I just wanted to read. It says, Darwin Sanders is not an average teenage boy. He is smart, he is shy, he has a skin condition for which he is heavily medicated. He has visions of another planet that are so vivid it is like he has been there before, and he insists, despite the assurances of doctors, that they are not mere dreams. Darwin's world is shaken when he learns of a secret that has been kept from him his whole life and the challenges that come with it in order to survive. I mean, that sounds like an adventure that I want to explore, so of course I said yes when the author asked me to send me his book for free. I haven't read it yet, but whenever I read the synopsis again, I'm like, why haven't I picked it up yet? Because it sounds so thrilling. <laughs> Next up, I have a little stack of books that I think will be really good and important for me to read in order to educate myself more about the Black Lives Matter movement, but especially about racism. First off, I have two small penguin modern classics? Do you call these little bundles? I don't know. One I have already read and that one is The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House by Audre Lorde. This is a collection of I believe four or five of her essays which were really wonderful and they are all about feminism, about racism and specifically intersectional feminism, about the erotics, being in touch with yourself. You can think of that in many different ways. I loved it so much and this was a great little collection of essays that introduced me to wonderful new ideas and really great quotes. And also Dark Days by James Baldwin, which I still need to pick up. So I don't have a clue what this will really contain, but I think another set of beautifully written essays that I can't wait to explore. I think that the next book will be a really important book when people want to learn more about racism. And I haven't read it yet, even though it was literally on my June TBR, so I should get to it really soon after I finish reading my my other non-fiction book about racism, which is by the way White Fragility, also bought that one but in an e-book form. The book that I was talking about is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race, written by Rini Edo Lodge, and this is a non-fiction book about racism. The book that sparked a national conversation, exploring everything from eradicated black history to the inextricable link between class and race. Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race is the essential handbook for anyone who wants to understand race relations in Britain today. So I'm not from Britain, but I think that a lot of the things that the author will be talking about can definitely be included or that I can recognize them in my country as well. And then the last like anti-racism book that I have is This Book is Anti-Racist by Tiffany Jewell and illustrated by Aurelia Durand. And if I already looked just at the insides of this book, I want to show you guys a little bit, but it's very difficult. <laughs> the illustrations are indeed gorgeous and I hope that the contents of this book will be just as gorgeous or even more gorgeous than the illustrations. <laughs> and I have seen quite some people read this book as well on Twitter and they have been raving about it. So I'm very excited to get to this one this year as well. I also bought another ebook which is nonfiction and about racism and I believe it was called White September supremacy, but I'm not too sure right now. It has an orange cover. I will put a picture up here. White supremacy or white privilege. Uh, I don't know what the title of this book was again, so I'm really, really sorry, but my phone is like 5% and I cannot look at it right now. <laughs> Those were a lot of books that I think will be really great in order to educate myself about racism, but I also bought and read a nonfiction book about feminism and it is a Dutch one. So I'm supporting my country. I'm supporting Dutch people, which is also really nice. And that one is Damn honey, a positive pleidoy on to do by yourself, shit and have so like a positive message to do whatever you please, whatever you like, which is written by Marie Lotte Hage and Nidia van Voorthuizen. This is an 80 page book about feminism. And again, I have gotten so many great messages and quotes from this one. And I have underlined and commented on a lot of the things as well. I wrote it down on the page, which I rarely do. It talks about body image. It talks about sex. Um, it talks about sexual harassment. It has some really amazing difficult and interesting topics in it and I will be making my boyfriend read this book in order to kind of introduce him to feminism and the important things that it talks about. Okay, we still have lots of books to get through and I'm sweating so much. So let's get on with the next book. And that one is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Tilia Hibbert. And I wasn't planning on buying this book until I watched a couple of videos from Paperback Dreams. I don't know what the girl is called from the channel and I'm so sorry and a little bit 
bit ashamed because she is huge here on booktube. She's been like screaming about this book and obsessing over it and I've heard amazing things from other people as well that this is a really great romance novel and to be honest I've never really read a romance novel kind of a little bit I'm confused, I don't know. <laughs> but I think that this will be one of my first dips, little tippy toes into the romance pool of books. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking like this. There is something included in this book which I think is really nice that we will be exploring and that is that Chloe wants to kind of uplift her life or like make it a little bit more interesting and she has made a little list of things that she wants to do and I always love books with like lists in it or I don't know it just for some reason that really makes me happy. Plus it also kind of reminds me of my life and how boring it sometimes can be and that maybe perhaps I should make a list as well. Who knows? I know nothing else about this book, but I've heard that a lot of people are swooning over the love interest, so hopefully I will do that as well. Then I have Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I've heard so many people rave about Nick Stone and I need to read more of her work. Actually, I need to read one of her works because I have never read a book by her. Our main character, Justice, he has to deal with some police brutality, even though he's just a really good kid, I believe also a very educated kid, and he has been studying the works of Martin Luther King. And I think he's kind of like having a look at how his ideas hold up in the current world. And together with his best friend, they are kind of dealing with police brutality. And I think the story mainly focuses on that. But when I showed this on my Instagram everyone was like oh my god this book is amazing you need to read it so I am gonna listen to those people and read this book. Next up some books that I got for my birthday so it was my 21st birthday on April 14th so it has been a while <laughs> but a little shout out to my friends who got me these books you guys are really amazing and thank you so much for getting me these. So the first one is The First 15 Lives of Harry August and I think that perhaps the people who have been on booktube for a little while might recognize the cover of this title and I actually have to read the first like 15 pages of this book and I thought it was really interesting. So as the title suggests, Harry August lives his life over and over again every single time that he dies but he doesn't really know why until I believe his 11th life and a little girl appears beside Harry August's bed and she says, I nearly missed you Dr. August, I need to send a message. And, and this story is about how Harry August's life was before that and after that moment which intrigued me very much but I haven't read further than the first 15 pages. The chapters are really short though so that is amazing and I believe Claire Nort's writing style is very complex but beautiful. So I'm looking forward to reading the story very much. Next up I got Tweet Cute by Emma Lord and all I know is that this is a cute contemporary novel about two characters who both have like restaurants that kind of rival against each other. It's all about grilled cheeses as well and I think that is kind of what the fight starts over but the funny thing is that the characters are called Pepper Jack and what I've known from food YouTube videos is that Pepper Jack is a kind of cheese in America. I don't think we have it in the Netherlands but it sounds cute. The third book that they got me is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is a mass market paperback. I've never had one like these. They're really tiny and thick as hell. <laughs> this is a classic in this community and I don't know whether I will love it or hate it. I actually am leaning more towards the side of hate. Well, maybe that's more of a strong word, but I don't know if this book is gonna be for me, okay? I've heard that this is much more about the writing and that not a lot happens, but then again, so many people love it and I just don't know what to expect. And the fourth and last book that they got me is A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. This is really funny <laughs> because this is a second book in a middle grade trilogy and because they are not in this book community all of my guy friends they didn't know that this is the sequel to a book one and that I didn't have book one. <laughs> but then I saw on Amazon that they had a pinch of magic so I have the first two books in this trilogy and all I know is that this is a very magical fantasy trilogy about I believe three sisters who are apparently trapped by an ancient curse. Three magical objects with the power to change their fate. Will they be enough to break the 
curse or will they lead the sisters even deeper into danger? I got the first book from the Amazon warehouse, but it has actually been damaged really quite badly. Like the cover of it is broken off. So that's a little bit of a shame, but thank you guys so much for gifting me all these books for my birthday. I have four more books to talk about, so let's get on with it. So next up, I have Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. I have seen this book multiple times in bookshops and I finally picked it up. This is a contemporary story about Simone and it deals with some more heavier subjects as well because Simone is HIV positive. I've also heard that this is an LGBTQ book so I'm very curious to see how that is being played out in the story but it says right here that Simone made friends, she's directing the school musical and she's making out with Miles, the most attractive boy in school. She's also HIV positive and that complicates things because the last time she told someone the fallout was devastating and when Simone finds an anonymous threat in her locker threatening to turn her world upside down she begins to wonder if the only way to rise above is to face the haters head on. I've never read a book with an HIV positive main character so I think that is the thing that intrigues me the most about this story and I heard again amazing things about it. Next up I have Crier's War by Nina Varela and Look at that metallic shiny cover. It is so stunning. This is the first book in I believe a fantasy duology, which I'm very happy about. I love duologies. They are not as intimidating as series, but they are longer than just a standalone. And sometimes you just want that little extra book. And this has a female female romance in it. First of all, I don't read enough female female romances, but I have also not seen it enough in fantasy. To be honest, I cannot tell you one fantasy book that I've read that has featured a female female romance so it's time to change that and that's all I know about this book but I've heard again amazing things about it and I hope that you guys can see but it has just really pretty illustrations on the cover as well in the metallic it's oh, so stunning another book that I recently read and that is date me Bryson Keller by Kevin Van Why. if you've seen my first summer reading vlog you know that I read this book in that one I really enjoyed it but it was a little on the cheesier side our love interest was very perfect which seemed a bit unrealistic to me. But what the story is about is Bryson Keller is like the popular guy in this high school and he has made a bet that every single week he will have to date someone because he doesn't believe in dating. But but with this bet, he didn't state that it should only be girls. So our main character, Kai, he is gonna ask Bryson Keller out for this week. And that's why the story kind of starts off. So this is a gay romance YA contemporary novel, which is really enjoyable, like I said, a bit cheesy, a little bit of insta-love is going on, which is kind of my pet peeve in books, but I was kind of prepared for it and I still enjoy the book very much. Woo! Okay, and then the last book that I have to show to you guys is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. At least on book Twitter, everyone and their mama <laughs> has been talking about this book, but I think in the book community in general as well. This is a female-female YA romance novel about our main character Liz, and she wants to become a doctor eventually, I guess. Like, she has some really high goals. So first of all, a praise to that, like, so much respect. But unfortunately, she doesn't have the best financial background. So it seems like her dreams are gonna stay dreams. But this thing in her high school is that when you become prom king or prom queen, you can also get a scholarship. So that is Liz's plan. But apparently it's not only her plan, it is the plan of Mac as well, another girl in Liz's school. She also wants to become prom queen. And I'm very excited about it. I've heard so many people love this one and have been giving it five out of five stars. So hopefully I will be giving it five out of five stars as well. All of these books seem incredible to me and I have read a couple of them like I said and they have been really great so I cannot wait to read the rest of them. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of the books that I showed you guys today in this video because perhaps I will be prioritizing some of them if you let me know. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. You guys can follow me on all my different social media pages because I'm a booktuber of course I have Goodreads but I also have Instagram, Twitter and email address and an Etsy shop and links to those will also be in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you in the next one. Bye!